Today, I'm very lucky to have two of the pioneers in bluegrass music, country music, country rock, and folk music. I got Herb Peterson next to me. Welcome to Southern Country. Thank you, Herb. Nice and Chris to be here. Hillman. Hi, Herb. Welcome to Southern <laughs> Thank Country. You, buddy. Thank you, you so You guys much. got a new project on Rounder Records going yes, on sir. right now as we sit here and talk. We do. Talk yes. to me about that Rounder project. It's a live album, Herb. It's called At Edwards Barn. And uh, it's been out since uh, late fall uh, of this last, well, 2010. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. And doing real well. Doing real well. Herb? Yes. Talk to me about the album. <laughs> it's, it was it, doing well. It, it was live. Uh, Where? We did it in, in a little town called Napomo, which is north of Santa Barbara, okay. uh, near Santa Maria, okay. right on the west mm -hmm. coast there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some of our pals come in and play with us, Larry Park oh. on lead guitar, and David Mansfield on fiddle, and Bill Bryson playing acoustic bass. So Bill was with us in the Desert Rose Band, as you know, oh, right. and so he plays a great acoustic bass. And, uh, we did it in, uh, we, we taped two shows. We did one show in the afternoon and one in the evening and combined the two and took the best of and there it is. How many songs on a CD? 14, I think. Who wrote them? Any originals? Uh, gosh. Some uh, originals that Chris wrote. Some originals, right. some I wrote. Uh, Herb, um, one I wrote, I'm trying yeah. to think. There's Herb's famous uh, Wait a Minute's on there. Okay. Uh, Anything from the old albums? Yeah, that you... no, we did. We covered everything from the last 48 years. That's what I was going to say, mm -hmm. because you're, you've are you been in business for yeah. 100 years between you almost. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, so you yeah. have a lot of, you brought some of the old stuff back? We yes. did, Herb. We yeah. did, uh, Good. we did the birds turn, turn, turn. Oh. We did uh, Brito Brothers material. We did Desert Rose material, oh. mm -hmm. new stuff. So we covered the whole gamut, yeah. 48 years of music. And then, uh, when you guys play out, What's most requested on the, when you're going to play tonight, what do you think is going to be most requested? Desert Rose music, bird music? Well, you'd be, you know or, what? Or you do bands you've been in with, uh, you know, with, um, with Dillard's and all it, that kind of stuff? It changes from time to time. A lot of them like the Burrito Brothers yes. uh, yeah. music and uh, Sin City and stu uh, mm -hmm. things like that. They, they, all, they call Chris, it out. Chris always gets a good hand for when he starts turn, turn, turn. Okay. You know, they all recognize that. And yeah, it's just a lot of different people like different tunes. Has the music you guys sing today on the new album with Rounder and the music you sang in the old days changed much? No, I don't think so. I don't think it no. has. What we like, we tend to still revere the old music, and we, we do, in our show, we do a lot of old gospel stuff, uh, but that's basically where our influence was. Even in Desert Rose Band, we took a lot of bluegrass and 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 things and, and uh, we we did West Coast country music, Buck Owens, bluegrass, that stuff. And Desert Rose is basically a country band. It yeah, was a country, oh, band. country sure. band. Yeah, yeah. right. Buddy. Now, without your first experience in the country music as a full band, other than you, the Flying Breeder Brothers, it was. Well, that was sort of classified in the old days of country rock. Yeah, but no, I think Desert Rose Band was a country band. And I'll tell you something mm -hmm. interesting, Herb. Uh, the country fans. They accepted us for who we were, not for who we used to be. Meaning, it didn't matter if I was in the Birds or Herb right. was in the Dillards. They took Desert Rose Band for what it was, and they judged it accordingly, and they liked it. it they was ran to you up the charts, too. Yeah, we yeah, did great. You guys were good with the Desert Rose we, Band. Uh, yeah. We still play with them. Yeah. We yeah. still get together once a year, every couple of years, do two or three shows. Do you consider yourself pioneers in country rock? How about oh. bluegrass and folk? Well, that. I don't know. We, pioneers, you know. I don't know if we'd be uh, pioneers. I, I mean, no. Herb and I cut no. our teeth listening to Flat and Scruggs and Monroe and the Stanleys, Osborne Brothers, Jim and Jesse. I pretty much covered it. Yeah, yeah right. Jimmy Martin. Oh, yeah. Jimmy oh, Martin. Yeah. And that's what yeah. we cut our teeth on. They were the, they were the first crop, and then uh, we were uh, kind of the second generation. Yeah, we were the you know. second generation, right. and then right. now we got all these kids out there. They're oh. just phenomenal musicians. Boy, I can't even keep up with yep. them. Can't even tap my foot to some of those guys who are playing so fast. Yeah. Uh, but we we really put a lot into our singing. That was what got okay. us. We loved the singing. And I worked, Herb worked with uh, Vern and Ray, yep. a duet from Northern California. I worked, got to work with Vern Gosden when he was 30 years old with his brother Rex. So I, I was brought up on good singing as was Herb. Mm -hmm. See, So yeah. we got... We well, got you were the lead singer in a lot of the bands that you were in? Because you, you were in a lot of bands. 
Above you were in a, a lot few, of bands. A few, a yeah, few, yeah. yeah. Um, you I singer. was more of a, a harmony singer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the Dillards, Rodney was right. more of the lead singer. Okay. But and he, you sing, can't find a better harmony band than I me. sang lead on a few tunes, you know. No, but you're right. You know, yeah. yeah. So. You know, uh, you know Emmy Lou Harris's <laughs> first hit, If I Could Only Win Your Love. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, Lou. Well, brother. he sang the duet with her. Wow. That was Herb and Emmy Lou. True. That, that launched her in, career, and she knows it. She's 74. Yeah, and 74. she uh, she always acknowledges that. Wow. That, that was Herb and Emmy Lou, and boy, what a blend! Wow. This yep. is the guy well, who sings. Well, she can sing just about everybody, though. She can. She's, She's a good. That unbelievable Even you, Herb. Voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unbelievable voice. No, she said, he said she. I know. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we go. What was that? I missed Cut. that one. I missed that one. I missed that one. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> By changing bands that you have done in so many, you know, all the years, you've going back 48 years apiece. What did you expect to achieve or gain by changing the bands and the players and all that kind of, because you've been in, you know, you've been in. Herb, I'll time. tell you what, you know, bands what are the toughest thing to keep together. Are they? Uh, well, yeah, and, and the only one that really uh, uh, parted company as friends and is able to still play is Desert Rose. That's so. Yeah, but other bands I was in, I mean, they were all good, they all had a great time, but things happen. You know, and it, it just, they start to splinter apart, and uh, it's tough to keep them together. And I, I loved everybody I worked with. At, maybe at the time, sometimes we get into some uh, arguments, but um, no, it was all great. It was all just stepping stones. It really was, you know. Talk about the lessons while we were Well, I just it. have a couple people I teach up at where I live, and I don't charge them. I just, I like to teach. And then um, we both have taught at this music camp in Ohio two different times where you have a three or four day course. And it's great, you know, I, I love doing it. It's, if I can give back and right. if someone yeah. taught, gave me lessons when I started, I'm sure. a mandolin player, so. Uh, but he's, Herb's been teaching longer than I have. He's yeah. really good at it. So. Yeah, but who's your well, most famous student? I don't have any famous oh, students, because oh, okay. most of the people that I oh. teach are like uh, junior executive types, oh, you know, okay. in Los Angeles, oh, okay, yeah. and they played banjo in college yeah. or guitar, yeah. and they want to kind of get back into it. So, a lot of different, you know, age groups right. too, from 18 to 65. Where can they get a hold of you if they want to? You can just uh, give the website or something. You while can we're just uh, go to herbpeterson.com, okay. H E R B P E D E R S E N.com. And It'll you can get, get a hold of me, yeah. That, Chris? ChrisHillman.com, Herb. That'll do it. Uh, email me uh, mm -hmm. there to answer any questions. Yeah. There you go. All right. What was the first song you ever wrote, Chris? Uh, first song I wrote was called Time Between. Uh, it was a, uh, uh, I wrote in the birds. It, it really was a bluegrass type song, and, the, and Clarence White played electric guitar on it. Brought him into play, did one of uh, just an incredible solo on, hmm. on that song, 1966. Desert Rose recut the song in the 80s. John Jorgensen played an uh, incredible mandolin solo uh, using the McReynolds style uh, right. uh, cross picking. And then we do it, we do it in our show. Mm -hmm. wow. Still do it. Still yeah. doing it. Oh, yeah. The wow. first song I wrote, I was 21 yeah. years old, and I don't know, it just right. happened. That was a good one. <laughs> Yeah, it worked. Sure it worked oh, yeah. darn good. Yeah, yeah. yeah because here it is 40 it, some years later, you're yeah, still playing yeah, that song. It yeah. worked. I don't know. I was just, God touched me. I was divinely touched. I just wrote this song and wow. I started writing a bunch of songs. Herb, what was the first song? First song I ever wrote, I think, was uh, a song about my son. And I, I named the song Little Pete. And it was a tune that I did with the Dillards years ago. Wow. Yeah. And. Uh, and then, I, it, you know, things just started happening more and more as far as songwriting goes. Wow. And it, it takes one to kind of crack the egg and get into it, you know, so. Wow, yeah. well, interesting. Mm -hmm. When you do your stage shows, you pay tribute to the heroes that you, the first generation Darn right people. we do. Sure, you bet. Always do. Yeah. Um, and many, many uh, mentors, right. influences we pay tribute to with my, uh, the students that I teach, I say, listen to the masters. Listen to the masters and, yeah. and learn from the, what, the guys mm -hmm. that came first. They paved the way, and um, absolutely. Yep. What's your favorite memory about writing a song? What's your favorite memory? Well, uh, for me, uh, I met this fella uh, about 1983, and the first day I met him, we sat down and wrote a song called Love Reunited. 
And then Desert Rose got together two years later, ended up recording it. Yep. It was the first top 10 single. And so I went, wow, that's, <laughs> not, you know, and I continued writing with that fella to this day. It's been 20 plus years, uh, Steve Hill. Yep. So as a memory, that was where, wow, that mm. really, I never <laughs> thought it was that good <laughs> of a song, but it did, it connected. Sometimes yeah. the ones you think are good aren't. Exactly. And sometimes the one you think, oh, this is terrible, that's the hit song. The you know, you're the, wor the, the writer is the worst judge of the song. What's your favorite song so far, Herb, that you ever recorded? Favorite song that I ever recorded, I think, is probably one that Chris wrote called Love Reunited, which you just talked right. about. Okay. Yeah, it's just, a, it's a wonderful piece of work, and it just moves along nicely, and the chord changes are great, and, and it's, it's a very memorable tune to me right. and to a lot of people that I know, you know, so. What's your, what would be your signature song of so far in the 48 years? Pick one song that you'd say, well, I want to be remembered for this song. Uh, or, probably wait a, wait a Minute. Wait a Minute? Yeah. I, d I wrote that, and I, I also wrote in the same year Old Train, oh, yeah. which Tony Rice recorded and some other oh, people have. You got it. But, um, Chris, signature? No, no those, those are the, the it, huh? greatest tunes in the world. Wait a Minute's a, a huge song for her. We're real uh, blessed. Yep. Lucky we can play still, do it for as long as we can. When it's time to stop, we'll know. You'll know when to yeah, stop. Yeah, we'll know when to mm -hmm. stop. Yeah.